Stephen Moore is uh, joining us now. Stephen Moore, co-founder of Committee to Unleash Prosperity, senior economic contributor for Freedom Works. We want to talk to him um, about the economy, the supply chain, the reconciliation bill, the debt ceiling. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Hey, Glenn. I'm good. I'm, I'm you know, in a good mood. Yeah. Uh, are you? I just I learned I learned yesterday that uh, all of this this five trillion dollar spending bill it's it's free. It's not going to cost a penny. Yeah. Not one nickel. Yeah. Free. That puts you in a good mood, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if life was that great? All we had to do is just print all this money, and it would be, it would be free. You know, you know, every time Joe Biden says that, by the way, and Nancy Pelosi says it, the support for the bill goes down. <laughs> you know, I, I, it kills me. I was doing an interview the other day. Um, I think it was with Megyn Kelly, and she said, you know, but a lot of people say that this this thinking, this new modern monetary theory, um, really kind of dates people and shows that now you're living in the past. You don't have to do that. And I said, you don't think some king back in the 1200s <laughs> had the idea of let's just print it. We don't need it. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, you know, this is a great point you're making. So, you know, for the last, you and I have known each other a long, long time. And yeah. for the last 30, 30 years or so of my life, I've, I've dabbled the Keynesians. And the Keynesians believed this, you know, back to the 1930s, that, you know, what you did with fiscal policy, government spending and tax policy, is when when you had a depression or you had a war or you had some kind of crisis like COVID, that you would run up government borrowing. And then the idea of Keynesian economics was then, then when the economy improved, you would start to, you know, pay that debt down. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of a way of smooth. And that was the theory. And I never believed in the theory. I thought it was just an excuse to spend money. But the point is, so now we are in a recovery. I mean, the economy is actually doing well. We have 10 million open and jobs today. There are jobs out there for anybody who wants them. There's no shortage of jobs. And yet the government wants, the, the left wants to borrow, you know, 8, 10, 12 trillion dollars. Now, in, from an economic point of view, that makes absolutely no sense. It's anti-Keynesian, right? And we should be actually paying down our debt right now, not not uh, increasing the debt in a in a recovery. And so now they've come up with this new idea that, as you just said, it's called modern monetary theory. And all modern monetary theory is is the idea that the government can spend and spend and and borrow and borrow, and because we are the world reserve currency, we can do this at no cost. Now, that is, as you said, the, the kings of the Middle Ages thought of this idea. Correct. It, every time it's ever been tried, it has lead, led to the decline of empires. I mean, you go back to the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, the British Empire, you know, the great empires. of, And the one constant is that mostly these empires have been destroyed from within, not from without. And debt and over-government spending have been, uh, you know, the trigger for the decline of empires. Now, I hope that doesn't happen in the United States, but come on, we're going to we're going to double our national debt over the next 12 years. And that's supposed to be good for our economy. Well, the the, the idea here and what we're leaving out, what we're leaving out is the really fun part of modern monetary theory. The reason why they say that it's not going to calm the beast, man, calm the beast. Um, the uh, reason why I'd say it's not going to lead to inflation is because we can um, we, we, the government will control what people can buy and not buy. So if milk all of a sudden starts to become, uh, you know, too high of a price, they'll they'll quash that price uh, by, um, you know, by making sure that the milkmaids are milking more cows or whatever it is. So it requires incredible amounts of government to be able to quash the inflation they say will never happen. Well, people should be paying attention right now to what's happening. I don't know if you've been paying attention, Glenn, to what's happening in Britain right now. But they're paying like seven, eight dollars a gallon for gasoline right now. Yep. They have uh, they, they have such supply chain problems that people are literally taking water bottles and they're filling up with gasoline for their cars and they're hoarding it. And that, doesn't this remind you of what happened in the 1970s when we had yep. gas fines? And it's because the energy supplies have been really uh, restricted. And gee, what country is restricting their energy supply? Oh yeah, the United States. You know, we're we're the number one producer of oil and gas and coal, and we've got a dingbat president who's saying, let's stop producing oil, gas, and coal. This is, you know, even if you believe. 
that we had to stop using fossil fuels. The idea of just turning off the spigots now is really, really dangerous. Very and dangerous. I, I worry that. I worry that that's coming to the United States, that you're going to start seeing higher and higher gas prices. Uh, we're, we're, not, we're not developing new wells in this country right now. And we have so – I mean, the Permian Basin in Texas, I think you're, you're in Texas, that, that has more oil than, any, than Saudi Arabia has. For I know. I, I will tell you, uh, Stephen, I, I think that it is possible in the next 18 months that we see 6 $7 a gallon gasoline here in America, if we don't change course, there, I mean, nobody in the Middle East is listening to us anymore and doing us favors. Uh, and uh, we're not producing anything. And quite honestly, the green people would love gasoline to be that high. They would. They want it. And, and incidentally, there's an amazing fact for you, uh, Glenn, that, that really shows what can happen when you put America first. In, in January of 2021, or January of this past year, do you know how much oil – this was Donald Trump's last month in office. Do you know how much oil we imported from uh, Saudi Arabia? No. Zero. Zero. <laughs> that was the first time in your and my lifetime we were actually not importing oil from other countries. Now, you know, so Biden comes in, he reverses that, and now we're totally, I mean, OPEC, who's the big winner in everything that Biden is doing right now? Well, let's see, the Saudi oil sheiks, OPEC, Vladimir Putin, and China. Yep. I mean, we're playing right into their hand. Uh, okay, so let's, let's, talk about, <laughs> let's talk about the supply chain here. Um, I don't think people understand, you know, people, everybody has experienced going into some store and, and, you know, wanting something and them saying, we don't have any more. And I can't tell you when it's going to come back in. Um, But I've been recommending that people do their Christmas shopping right now. Um, You agree with that? Uh, there are supply uh, chain problems. It's all being driven by government. One of the people ask me, why are we having problems? I'll, I'll give you one example. So uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, pretty close to uh, Fred Smith, who's the uh, CEO of FedEx. Great guy. One of the great entrepreneurs in American history. Uh, and he is probably the CEO of a company that's one of the 25 largest companies in the world. Um, he was telling me the other day that FedEx has 20,000 job openings, 20 thousand job openings, truckers, uh, mechanics, people working in the warehouses, people in, working in delivery, people. And these are, it's, FedEx is a high paying, you know, employer. You know, they are, they pay, you know, their truckers make 80, 90, hundred thousand dollars a year. They can't fill the jobs. You know why, Glenn? Because the government is paying people to stay unemployed with all of these benefits. Uh, and one of the worst features of what Biden wants to do is they are eviscerating all of the work requirements that we put under mm-hmm. Bill Clinton, who was a Democrat. We put in welfare reform that basically said we're going to have a safety net, but you got to, you know, got to, you got to work or get training or get schooling or get, you know, skills. They're getting rid of all of those things. And you've got people literally in many states now. You've got a couple that's unemployed with all the benefits, the food benefits, the uh, the rental assistance, the uh, cash payments. You can make a hundred thousand dollars a year and not work a single hour. Jeez. Stephen, I heard yesterday the president said that it's the Republicans that are trying to destroy the economy. The Republicans won't raise the debt ceiling. That's not true. Um, The Republicans aren't going to do it because the Democrats could do it just with 50 votes if they didn't want the reconciliation package as well uh, of three point five trillion dollars. So it is. It yep. is their reckless uh, recklessness of the $3.5 trillion bill that is actually going to uh, put us into default. Who's going to blink first and tell me the ramifications of it? So let me just correct you on one thing you said, uh, Glenn. It is not a $3.5 trillion spending bill. They're using phony accounting. They're using fake bookkeeping. It's really $5 trillion. The Wall Street Journal reported on that a few days ago, that if you use you know real accounting, it's five trillion dollars so that's point number one point number i'm going to use use an analogy okay let's say that glenn beck is is uh you know you've had some tough times and you took out a bunch of loans and now you're having a a hard time paying back the loans and so you have to go to the bank and uh, and and say hey look i need need another loan i'm I'm running i've got some tough times here i'm on the road to bankruptcy and uh and i want uh, a loan 
and, and can you increase my credit card limit? And the bank is going to say, uh, well, you know, what's your plan? <laughs> what's your plan for getting out of debt, Glenn Beck? You know, if you if you got if you got this debt, you know, how you want us to extend your your credit card limit and you want a loan. We want to see your plan for for getting out of debt. Um, and, and then it would be analogous to then then you're saying that the reason I'm bankrupt is because that bank, they won't give me the loan. And, and this is exactly what Republicans are doing. They're saying, we're not going to give you a credit, an increase in the credit card limit when you want to go out there and borrow $7 trillion more money. Correct. I mean, that's insanity, right? And so it's, it's, this is the, the, it's, the Democrats are saying the reason we have to face a financial crisis is because the Republicans won't raise the debt ceiling. No, the reason we're facing a debt crisis is because you morons want to go out and borrow and borrow and borrow more money. All right. So we were, uh, we were talking about the uh the the spending bill and the debt what does yeah. this what does this actually look like if we don't raise the debt ceiling what happens uh well let's just imagine that we didn't raise the debt ceiling before the limit happened it is not true it is not true that we would default on our debt okay i want to say that one more time folks because you hear, keep hearing this slide after we will not default on our debt what it means Glenn, let's assume that, uh, like, let's say after October 31st, we run out of, of, of uh, debt ceiling. And, and what it means then is the government is legally prohibited from borrowing any more money. Now, money comes in every day, you know, payroll tax money, income tax money to the federal government. It, what it essentially would mean is the government can only spend what it brings in. What a concept, by the way. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they can only they can't borrow, but they can spend as the tax dollars come in. And so that would mean that uh, we could pay Social Security. We could pay, you know, for Medicare. We could pay for the national defense. But we'd have to prioritize saying, you know what? Uh, Department of Education, you're going to have to shut down for a, a few weeks. Would that be a disaster? Uh, you know, Department of Labor, you're going to have to, uh, you know, shut down. Uh, no more foreign aid for a while. Gosh, I think this stuff. sounds like a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you want a balanced budget? I know how we can get a balanced budget. Don't raise the debt ceiling. It, it, it legally requires it. Now, look, would I recommend that? No. But I'm saying it's not the end of the world. Do you notice how every time it, everything is always the end of the world? You yes. know, oh, my God, we're going to. Now, what is the end of the world or what is extraordinarily dangerous is the idea we keep staying on this path we're on and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and buy more and more money. Now, the one thing that Joe Biden said that is true is. Both parties are responsible for this debt. No question about it. Both parties are responsible. But they're taking a debt that's $22 trillion, and they want to raise it by another $10, $15 trillion. And I think the Republicans should say, hell no, you broke it. You're the ones who want this massive spending bill. We're, we're against it. By the way, the Republicans have not been even included in any negotiations. They, the Democrats haven't even talked to the Republicans in nine months. Now they come to them hand in hand and say, oh, but you have to vote for the debt ceiling increase. Uh, no, I, don't, I think Mitch McConnell is absolutely right here. So are we going to stand against it or will the Republicans blink? No, what's going to have to happen is and McConnell is, is, is this is the other part of the story that the that the media refused. The New York Times had a big front page story and the Washington Post about this saying, "Oh, Republicans are going to bring the government to the brink of disaster." No, what happens is Mitch McConnell saying, "You have the votes to raise the debt ceiling, but you're not going to get any Republican votes." You see, what the Democrats want to do is have everybody hold hands, stand on the cliff, mm -hmm. and jump off together. No way.